Welcome to AB Talks, and today we are live on location here in the new cloud kitchens of Kitopi in Hester Street here in Dubai. Now, if you've been living on the moon, Kitopi is Dubai's latest unicorn, a company that is valued at over a billion dollars. And to find out how they've got there, I'm delighted today to be joined by CEO and co-founder Mohamed Balut. Uh, Mohamed, welcome to AB Talks. Thanks for visiting us. Oh, very welcome. I'm looking forward to seeing you around. Now, a quick question, but also quite a big question to answer. Give me a helicopter view of what's happening here and what's happening in Kitopi. So you're going to see a mixture of, you know, 40 to 60 different brands being cooked over here. It's a 10 day old site. So this site is going to uh, ramp up super fast. And what you're going to see here is a mixture of 40, 60 brands, every single cuisine type you can think of. It's a shared resource logic. So you have one team working on all these different brands in many different ways. You're gonna see a lot more automation, conveyor belts moving goods in and out to keep people super efficient in their workstations. You're gonna see an untraditional work environment where it doesn't really smell and feel like a kitchen, but more feels like a, a proper production line that allows us to build efficiency. Um, and what you're also gonna see is uh, our grocery play, which complements our core business, which leverages our supply chain, all the ingredients we use in our, in our kitchen to really give customers uh, uh, ingredients from our kitchen to theirs. So there's a lot of interesting changes and developments happening in the next 24 months that make us excited. But again, that's just us. We're just in, you know, about to be five countries um, and just focusing on our, our B2, initially our B2B place. You can only imagine once we unlock much more on the consumer side of things, but also once we do this on a much more global scale, what this could look like. And that excites me. You've recently been invited onto the board of the Dubai Digital Chamber of Commerce. So with those lenses on, what excites you when you look at the startup slash digital opportunity in Dubai? So we're super proud to be a company based, born out of Dubai, based out of the UAE and expanding towards the world. And, uh, and I think Dubai has a lot to offer. And I think that that's something we want to definitely leverage and, and, and build momentum from. Uh, so me joining the Dubai Chambers uh, uh, advisory is something I'm super proud of. I think there's a, a lot that myself and other peers could contribute into helping Dubai think about uh, how to help companies like us yeah. grow and expand. And, and, and that's already happened. That we, we've had so many conversations with the government on ways to address our pain points and helping us grow. And, and that way we're super grateful of being based out of Dubai. I mean, I was gonna ask, what do you want your legacy from your contribution to the Chamber of Commerce to be? Who do you want to inspire? Who do you want to help? So if I can just help the next batch of uh, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, my prediction is, you know, the region here is going to have at least 20 more unicorns in the next two years, right? This is, it's about to explode with great companies uh, solving real big problems. And uh, one thing I'd, be, I'd love to do is, is, is be uh, uh, kind of the ears of all my entrepreneurs and, and kind of speak up and, and let the government know of different pain points we're facing that they could probably help us solve. So if we turn to look at the future of food, um, cloud kitchens are a, a fairly re recent phenomenon. Are you competition for the restaurant and hospitality scene? Are you complementary? Are you um, creating an evolutionary change in the industry, kind of in the same way that Uber made the transport industry evolve. What, what's, the, what's your viewpoint on that? So we're definitely enablers in this ecosystem. So if you think of this ecosystem having landlords, having restaurants and having aggregators and customers, we think we bring it all in together. So we allow restaurants to scale. We are partners, we franchise their business off from them and work with them. We work with aggregators by helping them be much more efficient to deliver on the content to consumers. Uh, and we give customers and consumers food in a much faster way uh, with hopefully much better quality than we typically get given the level of processes and, and, and efficiencies in our tech stack that we've built up to allow us to do that. You look around at Katopi today, you look, you, so you scaled across the GCC uh, three years. If you could go back to day one and tell yourself any lesson that you've learned along the way, what would that be? We would have probably invested much more in day one on the uh, operating playbook than we just than we did. So we stepped on the pedal a little too fast on day one. I probably would have waited 12 months to step on a pedal to do that. Uh, so there were a couple of learnings there on like, while it is very important to, to you know, fail fast and, and keep going, 
Uh, I think that one of the learnings we had is the foundation of failing fast. Like foundation wasn't where we wanted to be. So we learned a lot. It took us first 12 months to figure that out and, and, and go back to the drawing board and build back that operating playbook, which allowed us to get to where we are today. What does the future of food look like in your head? Future of food is one where customers are in control of everything they eat. Not just by being able to choose the restaurant they want or the time they want food delivered, but being able to really control everything when it comes down to personalizing food for them and really having ultimate transparency in food, knowing exactly where the food came from, controlling your calories, uh, and, and con controlling everything from your allergens, to your nutritional goals, to your financial goals. And I, and I see that's the way the, food's go the world's going. I also see that the, wor the, the, the way the, the food world is moving is one where traditional brands may not exist in like 10 years from now the way they exist today. And if you think of other verticals, whether it comes down to cosmetics, fashion, uh, or any other e-commerce vertical, you'd see that's already happening, right? You have like key influencers building out great brands and allowing customers to access it in a very untraditional way. So we see that in food, that's gonna happen. There's gonna be much more chef-led brands and much more influencer-led brands that allow customers to engage with them in a much more <laughs> untraditional way than what they typically did with, uh, with restaurants. So my big bet is, the next big brand is going to be built out of TikTok as, uh, as opposed to uh, a typical food court. Final question. Um, we're still living through a pandemic. Sometimes we forget that in the UAE because we're so fortunate about the way it's been handled. But how much has the pandemic changed your business model, accelerated your business model? Have you pivoted any way to um, embrace an opportunity that's, that's been born out of a change of behavior during the pandemic? First few weeks after you know, COVID hit, it definitely had an impact on us and the entire food ecosystem in the, in the region. Uh, there were a lot of lockdowns that didn't allow us to deliver food. It was constraints on staff movement. Uh, and there was also this whole aspect of people were worried that food wasn't cooked in a very safe environment, given that you know, COVID wasn't really understood so well. And, and then you know, fast forward a few weeks after that, we invested heavily in educating customers on you know, the, the, the foundation of how um, we cook and how the restaurant industry actually works. And, and I think people just got super bored cooking at home and, uh, and, and our industry just really flew. And, uh, and I think that, uh, the, the, so while we understood that food delivery was gonna grow anyway, it definitely accelerated our growth. Ordering food, adoption of ordering food online was like expedited, but more importantly, the ability for restaurants to sit with us and understand that delivery is gonna become a more integral part of their business and accept business models like us is something that definitely helped. Mohammed, you've been very generous with your time today. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for visiting us. I'm really looking forward to the tour to see Let's what goes on behind the scenes. Let's go for it.